Thank you very much. Um, I'm also going to take a slightly different style once the slides come up. Here we are. Um, so I'm going to tell you a story about a piece of work that was done um, a little while ago, but I think exemplifies some of the issues that we need to address. So um, I was working in a major uh, integrated health system in Scotland, and I came into an organization that had been several different organizations. Uh, they were not functioning as an entity, um, and the whole idea was to manage the continuum of care from community right into and up to tertiary level and back into community again. So to address this, we recognized that we needed to bring about some behavioral change. So what we, we looked at was how do we actually kick off that kind of impetus within an institution, which is highly complex. We had eight, eight and a half thousand nurses spread over multiple sites uh, from very rural areas, from some island communities, in fact, uh, right through to um, the uh, tertiary level centre in the, in the major town. So we looked at um, some work that had been done back in 1995, believe it or not, by Frankie et al., who basically said, you know, if we look at how CE can actually have a behavioural impact, what can, we, what can we tell from that? And they identified that there's a lack of a conceptual model um, to assess the impact of this. And, and, you know, I think the work that Cathy's doing, I think, is moving us in that right direction. Um, but a lot of the CE back in the, the 90s was very much front-loaded. It's about objectives, it's about who taught it. It wasn't actually about what people got out of it. They also noted that voluntary participation was far more effective in terms of bringing about behavioural change. And they also noted that you actually needed to create a culture where risk was encouraged uh, as part of the strategy to move forward and unstick where you were. Um, they noted that having a single focused topic that built throughout the uh, experience was much more effective than a potpourri of um, activities. And that taking a systems-based approach rather than focused on the individual was actually far more successful. So what we did was we actually had a kickoff um, event where we really started to look at um, what was the major issues that the nursing staff were facing at that time and to then use that to drive a whole series of consequent events. And what we were trying to do is assess whether or not that intervention had made a major change to the way that we bring about um, uh, the, the services that we were offered. So the first thing we did was to try and understand how was the existing staff connected? So we used social network analysis to identify where individuals got their information from and who they transmitted it to. So what is the environmental uh, environment, what is the environmental structure within which people are communicating? And to see whether or not there was any issues within that, and then we subsequently measured it. And as you can see, several things have happened. They moved away from an isolated communities of leaders in their own domain to a much more integrated entity. The path lengths between communication was markedly reduced and the frequency of communication was increased. So we know that the intervention had a major system-wide impact as part of, of this process. We also were able to identify those key individuals that acted as uh, connectors within the organization. And those are the people that we then went to to actually help disseminate information and gather information in terms of how it was going on. And we also were able to identify individuals that were um, uh, a kind of dead end in terms of not transmitting information and then actually working with them to, to, to um, communicate more widely as part of that process. So what did we actually do? Well, the first thing we did was we got people together to ask what was the biggest problems that they were facing at this point in time and what were the solutions that they tried. Interestingly enough, those individuals had more problems than they had solutions. But when we aggregated all of the solutions together, we actually had more solutions than we had problems. The trouble was that those solutions were locked 
in different parts of the organization and people weren't communicating. We identified the, the top issue as the need to address the workload and as a result of that, we focused on flexible working practices and how do we implement that within the system. So we worked on that, we identified 24 different practices, we were able to codify them and we were able to set uh, a system whereby people could then use that when they went back to their environment. We advertised for people who were interested in working uh, using flexible modes and people had the opportunity then to apply it. We reduced our um, usage of banking agency by 73%. We in reduced our vacancy rate by 55%. And we actually were able to identify a number of exemplars of how people were doing that. So um, Many Happy Returners was uh, a system whereby people were able to bring people that had taken a career break back into the profession and to support them in their local community. Because remember, we were a, a large setting and they were able to work locally as part of that system. Um, this was some funding that was available nationally, and at that point in time, we were the only health system that was able to fully utilise our funding. In fact, we used 250% of all of the funds of, that were available, and it was so successful uh, that we were held up as a, as a kind of national example of how to move forward. We also were able to um, keep a hold of those nurses that wanted to take a uh, experience somewhere else. So um, Wish You Were Here is an example of how the, the manager of the intensive care unit through technology maintained links with people that went to Kosovo, went to Australia, went to different parts of the world to gain some other experience, but kept a connection to them and then invited them to come back into the environment when, when they were uh, finished. That then led to a change in culture, which was actually really about saying, let's actually start to, to, to tackle wider issues. And sharing experience and learning uh, resulted in the collection of a, a wide number of exemplars that were then transmitted throughout the rest of Scotland. So the challenge is, uh, uh, that this, this brings is that we've got to move our accreditation processes from a point in time focused on the individual or the programme to one that actually recognised the organisational or system's effects. To focus not just on the individual as an isolated part, but the network of connected act actors and the role that they can play as a result of an educational experience. Away from just the problem to sharing solutions, because there's huge capacity within institutions, it's just that we don't often facilitate that dialogue. And to invite people to participate rather than impose it so that they choose to really move this forward. It's very much from moving from static learning to action learning. And it's also from a model where basically it's 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. The education is finished, I'm out the door, I can forget about it, to a model where it's 10, 9, 8 and it's lift off and you facilitate the application of that immediately thereafter. So moving from a point in time to one where we're really looking at return on investment over a period, and so that we can then move away from this idea of simply looking at continuing educational hours to one as to what we do with that. Now, why is this important? Because in the UK, the Nursing Midwifery Council has already implemented a system whereby for revalidation, they're not particularly interested in how much continuing education I do. They're interested in how I have used it. And I have to demonstrate that through reflective notes and through peer uh, commentary from others. So there are examples in some parts of the world that I think we can learn from as we move forward on this journey. Thank you very much.